I mean, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I leave for 10 days. I go on a road trip. 24 hours later, they make a huge, you know, deal, and they fire service, hire Dan Wilson, and then I've got to see your goddamn name and face everywhere on, you know, the times that I did get internet. Look at this interview what Divish did here. Here's what Divish did here. Can you believe what Divish said here? You son of a bitch. You know, that goddamn Marine Layer podcast and the Locked On M's podcast, F you guys. Stop stealing my guy. No. You know, I don't need them getting credit over us. You got to save that stuff for me, for us, for Reggie, Chalet Bowl. I but now need- I got the Marine Layer podcast, and they clip after clip out there of you. And then I got the Locked On Mariners podcast, a clip after clip of you out there. You know what? Those two guys, Marine Layer, I'm talking to you. Locked On Mariners, I'm talking to you. I'm coming after you. Be careful. Watch your back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send out like a, um, a deal, though. Anytime I do a podcast, you are not allowed to – put snippets of me on Twitter where my face looks fucking gigantic. Well, that's the thing. I never do that to you. Yes, but you Marie, do. No, I don't. Marine layer, I mean, they, yeah. I, they could even fit your head in the shot, well, for like, God's sakes. It's like a bad crop. It's like my mom trying to crop a photo on iPhone, for God's sakes. No. I'm kidding, by the way. I I enjoy those, too. I hope they understand the sarcasm and all I, that, but... I mean, like when you're but, like in a when you're Jesus. like in a startup. Was there a podcast you didn't go on when I was gone? Uh, my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened to the extra innings podcast? We're huh? trying to we're trying to sell it to the puck sports media. Come aboard! Uh, I told uh, you guys Empire. before. Why don't you do it? Bring Jude on. We'll do, I'll moderate it for all of you. Yeah, because I think I'm too lazy to put it together anymore. Um, I'll help you out. You know, when you're a startup media company I and you're, you're fledgling say. trying to get off the ground. Such a dick. You got to probably uh, <laughs> jump off your vacation for an hour or two every day and drive to someplace. You there was nowhere to go. You couldn't drive an hour? I was in the Canadian Rockies. Oh, yeah. You can drive an hour. I mean, Eureka, Montana is not that far from the border, you know. I was on vacation. I'm out. I, Tap out. I, I mean, you picked a bad time for vacation. You want to go? Why don't you just go the week of the Super Bowl for guys? I knew sakes? it was going to happen. I just I, knew it. And Jim told- Moore, he freaking, he's like, you're, something's going to happen. You know it. I said, yeah, you're probably right. I, and God damn it, it did. I think on the last one, I said that I was pre-writing a story about service getting fired. <laughs> we- and you, did you not think I was like, prescient in this moment like i have an idea it's like i gotta pre-write obituaries and stuff can you just give me more of a heads up off the record and how about next time before i leave let's just tape hey a scott service is gonna get fired podcast we could have done that i mean like i said i have my story all ready to go i didn't know that i didn't know they break it they'd have ken rosenthal break it and i'd have to wait three and a half hours before i could get it confirmed (sighs) Well, welcome to the Ryan Divis show. It's it's among <laughs> fifteen thousand podcasts that he does. That's <laughs> on PuckSports.com. It's brought to you by Chalet Bowl, Washington's oldest operating bowling alley, proudly serving uh, the community since nineteen forty one. Located in Tacoma's Proctor District, uh, they've been family owned and operated for forty years, delivering top notch customer service and a unique twelve lane experience. Check H, uh, check out ChaletBowl.com to book your next reservation. And experience the best in local fun. You know how to get me uh, exclusive. As Rashid Wallace said, CTC, cut the check. <laughs> I, I, we, will, we, we will make an offer that you will not be able to refuse. <laughs> you Guaranteed. Reggie, Reggie's going to be charging like $50 a bowling game now. Poor Reggie's going to have to come back to work. I see, hey, Reggie, I see all your, 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 your shots on Instagram of playing golf. You know what, Reggie, next year? Those days are over, bud. You got to work again. <laughs> uh, no. Well, you, here's the good thing that you did deliver to me uh, while I was on vacation. You recommended as we were coming back home, uh, leaving Glacier, just when I stopped off in Whitefish, Montana, you said go to the Bulldog Saloon, which I did because I didn't like everything else there except the Great Northern. That was fun. But every other store there and restaurant, I was annoyed because it was just like overrun with people that aren't just 
California. overruns. Yes. California's. And I'm like, I effing hate that. Like, I guarantee, I wish I could have seen white fish. I've never been before. 30 years ago, because I'd love it. Oh. And But now, this version, I don't love it. But then you said, go to the Bulldog Saloon. I did. Uh, well, I mean, what a great, that is exactly what this area needs. That type of old sports bar. And they must have found every 1980s beer cutout possible. Great. What a great spot. Old school. And then you go on, you said, go into the, and then you made some comment. Hey, don't take your son into the urinal. I'm like, I don't know what that means, but okay. Then I go into the urinal. Wonderful. Just a collage of 1980s play playboys centerfold cutouts. Yeah. Just it, uh, you know what it it just I, I sat in there and was going to the bathroom and I said I kind of cried a little bit and I said this is America, <laughs> the America that I like. I mean, like <laughs> they get buckets of beer, you get <sighs> buckets of beer, I, the cheeseburgers, the Huckleberry barbecue sauce wings. I didn't want to tell you about I got that. Three, I got three orders of them. I mean, like, because that stuff is just, you eat that Ugh. stuff, you're going to an Ozempic commercial after that. So it's. I like, couldn't stop ordering. They're, they're, it's crack cocaine. <laughs> My God. Like, I, and that's, and it's like the, the mixture is sweet and spicy, and Ugh. then it just makes you pound domestic beers. Oh my God. I had, I, I can't many beers I had, and just the shot, just beer shot, beer shot, wings, oh, yeah. wings, wings. Oh, yeah, I like any I like any sports bar that has the beer shot special too. You know, yeah. just like you know, like and they they say because like some airports will do it, but like sports bars, it's a it's a, I mean that's an old school Montana oh, sports bar. The guy beautiful. that owns it, he used to be a football coach in Haver, Montana, for a while. Huh. His son runs it now, okay. uh, but yeah, it's um, like if you like, I mean, honestly, it's like. On those movies, you know, eat a movie, like some guy goes into a sports bar in Wisconsin somewhere or Montana, you know, you just, you know, it's old school, the old guy behind the bar working. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, it was an old lady, but it was just, you know, stronger and more masculine than every guy in there. Oh, yeah. yeah and it just had like all the pictures of like all the past people that have ever been in there before. They must have had like, you know, club, you know, a, a, a bar softball team, I think a bar hockey team. There's yeah. a bunch of pictures up there. They got all the high school sports teams up there that they all, all come all in the there. All the high school sports helmets. It's like, well, I mean, you've yeah, been to the bar. You've been to the sports bar I worked at in Missoula, Reds Bar, where they got yeah. every football helmet in there and all the old school stuff. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't treat you wrong. Like, I know <sighs> what you, I know what you like. It was wonderful. A lot what I like, you know, and so I want to, you know, I wanted to do think the Mariners too. Um, I had tickets to see Tyler Childers on Saturday in Missoula. Uh, <sighs> I a ticket that I could have gone to Pearl Jam in Missoula. I was going to take a quick flight back and then just kind of, you know, basically huh. let Jude do some work. And uh, no, they fired Scott. And then I had a whole weekend of fun and good times. So, yeah. uh, and I, I mean, like I got well, screw you. The then you went on every damn show in the world to talk about it. So. I got, I got some videos of Tyler Childers in Missoula, the sound quality and the intensity that that guy sings with. Oh. It was really, you know, and then, you know, Sturgill Simpson is doing the Kettle House Amphitheater in Missoula as well, you know, on the river. Was that outdoors. the one we were supposed to go to? Yeah. 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 It's really. Just, when is that? Uh, in a week or two. Yeah. That's not good. Comes from it. Well, you wrote the story. I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm just, we're going to, okay. I'm going to apologize here to, to some of the listeners and viewers because we're going to rehash some stuff, but I just want to get caught up on it so you're going to repeat stuff what you what you said elsewhere and what you've written about but mm -hmm. we now have time to breathe on it because right they make the move they fire him yeah and then they get that dramatic win on friday and everyone's oh here maybe this is the turnaround well you know since then it's you know falling apart they're done i mean there's 23 games left mathematically do they still have a shot yes but realistically they don't you wrote about it the other day or yesterday six and a half out now with 23 to play five and a half out of of the wild card um, you know, just disaster. Just a, a, I, I have never. I said this yesterday, in and I hope people understand. I, I don't think I've ever witnessed a collapse like this in Seattle sports history. I think it's the greatest collapse. And people said, "Well, wait, a minute, what about '94, the Sonics?" Well, the, but that wasn't a. I mean, that was a choke job. I think there's yeah. a. I think I. I, I a collapse I think, is a, 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 see, a. collapse is a slow fall. Yes, it's like this, a. You're exactly right. It's this a is, slow fall where they were at. 
the choke that was with the Sonics. It was a choke job. They got in the number one seed. They're going to go to play in the NBA Finals. All of that, and then they they choked it away. The somebody said, "What about the Seahawks not handing it off?" I mean, I, I, I don't know. That's just a idiotic play. I don't know if that's not a collapse. Those are those are those are like short samples of failure. This is you know that's like it's like a the instantaneous of a landslide going down. That's a that's the the Sonics. This yeah. is glacial. It's just been a slow yeah. fall to the bottom, uh, and and like he just sit there and 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 I mean I know Scott would say it and Dan said it. It's just like oh yeah you know we're gonna get back on track and get things turned around. They, this team's never won four games in a, or five games in a row. I don't think. I don't know how many um, times they've won like eight out of ten, especially in the second half. Like I was, you know, and, and it's funny and I, I've written it because they've said it, but. I don't think they're in a position to say we should beat a team because we're better than them. Everything about how you play says you're not. I mean, since July, since June 19th, when they were 10 games up, the Mariners, the only team with a worse record than the Mariners since June 19th is the Chicago White Sox. And they're not even a major league team. You know, since the since July 1st, the A's have a significantly better record than the Mariners. Since the All-Star break, they have a significantly better record than the Mariners. So I don't think the expectation of beating any of these teams um, it, it should be given. I mean, like, you know, it, and it looks like, honestly, the last four games or so or five games, it's looked bad how they played because they don't mm-hmm. score. And the A's are hitting home runs and. Lawrence Butler is just killing balls, and they're running Slop, around. Sloppy, making mistakes. Yeah, the Mariners are making mistakes in the field, on the bases. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, this is just, you know. Uh, but they like, never I, were going to solve it. Divish, you know this, and you probably talked about it. They never were going to solve this by firing him. No, no. It's the one of the – like, everybody says, well, you know, it's just a different voice. Get a voice inside your head or something. My God. Like, you know, these guys, the players sit there and talk about it all the time, about, like, it's their mental capacity to play, you know. But I think, to me, what happens is some of the magic that you have, because I think a big part of, like, a team's success isn't the manager bringing them together. It's the players bringing it together. The players playing for each other, the players wanting it. Like the 21 season, and they got, you know, they were supposed to be good. Then they got hot, and then, like, they had this rally, because, like, they knew Seager was gone. So they had this rallying cry, do it for Cap or whatever, because they wanted to, they wanted to get to the postseason for Seager, you know? And so that was kind of like they all played for each other. They played unbelievably hard. They knew they weren't talented, and, and they had success. 22, you know, they had kind of like the similar group and they had, you know, Marco and Mitch and they had all the the talk and everything else and they were still frustrated and they won. But like you can solely see that kind of devolving when you bring in new players and you take out, remove key players and key pieces to an organization that that maybe the same the same motivation to get you through each win isn't there. I mean, baseball is still an individual sport cloaked inside a team sport and guys have their own reasons for how they perform and how they do stuff. But like, usually when the teams that are good and really play hard and really kind of, um, kind of do something special, it's because they, they, it means more to them for the group than it does their individual Mm -hmm. failures or successes. So I think that's part of it too. But yeah, like, they, they just got – they have loft. They have loft. <laughs> they do. They, But it's – it's. they don't ever – they cease to amaze me how much they are tone deaf and can screw stuff up. You know, the, this season being – oh, The mayor? The mayor – just all oh. – the, the organization. You know, you go back to how you said you had the the story, you know, kind of written because you you, you kind of heard that you know, something could be could be on the horizon. They, uh, you know, then he does the interview with Ken Rosenthal and gives all that. In in, in I think the the interview, I think the takeaway from that is 
Well, that sounds like a guy that's going to keep his job. And then, of course, then Rosenthal breaks the story. The fact that the manager of the team, nine years, and he was a good manager, okay, and and, a, and seems like, a, I don't know him personally, seems like a good guy. But you're, the GM and, and, and him are friends. The fact that he finds out on social media that you, you can't have your house in order and can't handle it in a, in a professional manner, that it somehow leaks out and it gets and that's he finds out on a ticker is that where he found a ticker or just on twitter or no, something he got a they got a twitter alert i mean that's ryan it's this ownership group and this this front office is so embarrassing that that is just it, it's i wasn't even surprised by it because i was like it's just par for the course with these guys yeah i mean like that was my thinking too is like people are all like all up at arms i'm like ah you know, we're getting back to the old days. Like, not even surprised. Yeah, no. Um, like, we can curse on this, right? Well, has it been so long since you could you not curse on the other ones? I don't know. The one time, could, I don't think we could. I don't. No, remember. you could swear as much as you oh, want. Yeah. No, it's that other one of the other ones I went on. Well, one of the other the fifty. I mean, right. the, one of the fifteen thousand you're going on, I'm but a not, not next year because Reggie, you're stepping up next year. Is, mm. It's over. Uh, well, you know, that or I'll go to Mitch's podcast or something, you know. Can't <laughs> <laughs> do Mitch, I, you know. Everybody, yeah. but you know, it's the funny thing is everyone thinks that everybody hates Mitch for some reason. I don't. Hey, Mitch I is don't. cool. I don't hate him at all. I get along with Mitch. I just yeah. can't go on his podcast. Um, no, getting back to the Mariners, these guys could fuck up a cup of coffee. Really. Exactly That's, right. They just, they don't make anything easy. And we've said it before. Said I probably on one of the other podcasts. I've, I know I've said it on this one first. They need a <laughs> vice president of common sense and how things are portrayed. And this is the problem because, like, they have smart people that like work in media relations and marketing, and wow. they know it. But these guys don't listen to them. That's the problem. They don't listen to the people that they hire to do the jobs because they think they're smarter than them. Right. And it's just idiotic. Like, if I'm the common sense guy, and granted, like, it comes from a place because I'm probably competitive, but if, like, if DePoto says, hey, yeah, Ken Rosenthal wants to do an interview and talk about the state of the Mariners, my question would have been, as the vice president of common sense, Jerry, I, I thought you said you hated Ken. I thought you said you and Ken don't get along. <laughs> and he would have said, well, you know, we had some issues back when I was at the Angels, and I didn't like how you reported on the social stuff, you know, and then he really beat me up when I hired Scott Service. Then he crushed me about the Lorena Martin stuff. And he was like, but yeah, you know, maybe this is a good, I mean, I think I'll talk to him. No, that's not a good idea. Because no. you knew what he was going to ask. And it's the same thing that Adam Jude and, and Shannon and, and um, Daniel were trying to ask the, on the days before in Detroit and Pittsburgh, talking to him about the status of the team, status of Scott. So then he goes and does this interview. It comes out, and of course, the kicker is he's talking about Scott's um, Scott's job security, and he gives that quote about like, "Oh, you know, well, you know, we got to address everything. If maybe it's a new voice." Well, that's just all that's doing is laying the groundwork to say that hey, we're thinking about firing him. So when they do fire him, it doesn't look so bad. You know, it right. doesn't look like it's a spur of the moment reactionary thing, mm -hmm. and so. You know, and then I got to go ask Scott when we're in Los Angeles, hey, did you read this story by Rosenthal? And he's like, well, no, they sent me pieces of it. I go, well, I can imagine what parts, you know, and then they just kind of said, well, I, you know, it comes with the territory of the job. Mm. I got to focus on it. And then mm. he read another story the next day by Rosenthal that told him, you know, he's fired. I mean, like, yeah, they're like the common sense aspect of that, you know, and it's like, you call Scott in to have a noon meeting, a lunch meeting or whatever. No, like if you're really going to go that route, fly your ass to to Los Angeles or be there when he gets off the plane and say, look, we're, we're going to do this now because I don't want anything, you know. I mean, the other thing is this is like, can you really sit there and, and think, oh, there's not going to be leaked out this news? The like, not after he, you just... Not after you just said that the day before. Like, but, that's the whole point. But I just, like, like why, like, DePoto and these people should be removed immediately? The fact that you told a reporter before you told the guy you're going to fire yeah, is I don't, just inexcusable. 
I don't think Jerry was the leak from what I've gathered. Uh, well, but whoever I think, uh, it was. Uh, the, the, the theory that I'm getting from sources in MLB and even in the org is that it's like uh, that it was one of the ownership groups that leaked it to Ken. So... But I mean, well, I mean, again, it, with the, 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 then there's, 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 there's two people. Then that's either because there's only, I mean, I would assume there's two prominent people, and that's John Stan and Chris Larson. I mean, they're the two. Most Chris Larson prominent. is literally like lives under a rock, or could be down on Ballard Ave or downtown as a hobo. So I don't know, because <laughs> that's what what he looks like, and no one ever sees him. So it's John Stanton then, and and, and then and I, I'm not saying you're saying that. I'm just saying I'm going to say that. Um, then it just, but it's just it's. It was bad. Like that whole thing, like it made them look bad anyways. It was going to look bad anyways on them, regardless of what the fans said on Twitter. Yeah. It was going to look bad from professional circles. And then they managed to make themselves. That's what they, these guys do in a bad situation. <laughs> they make themselves look worse somehow. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And even it's a, a skill. It's actually a skill. And even in a good situation, a lot of times they somehow make themselves look bad. Yeah. Like it's an art form. It, it really is. Like, it's it's just like how do you do this? Like I, I don't know. I mean, you know. And then then they don't even do a presser. That 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 they to do me a Zoom. was the icing on the cake. And because I like, thought I had missed stuff because I'm following like we get into whitefish and stuff and and I'm getting Internet service back. So I'm kind of I'm scrolling. I'm trying to catch up on as much as I can. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not was, really seeing like video of anything. Uh, I just reading. I'm reading your story, um, you know, watching to, to Marine Layer podcast, Locked <laughs> on Mariners, uh, Dugout podcast, the uh, Three Outs Next podcast, and Refuse to Lose podcast with you. Um, <laughs> the Refuse to Lose podcast would be a good one. But, but I don't see any actual video of anyone. It wasn't actually, uh, Ryan, it wasn't actually, I think it was yesterday, the day before, where I actually, I think from King 5, finally found video of DePoto talking about it. It was on a Zoom. Yeah, I mean, like, like they had the how do you fire a manager and then talk to you guys in a press on a Zoom? When we're in town, I might add. Oh, my God. It's just unreal. I'm mean, like, as, as, uh somebody in the media might have said that's chicken shit it's chicken shit it's of course it is i mean like john and and jerry and justin got to go out there they got to go out there and work not of to mention course. the fact not to mention the fact they just they just draw like they just put in there and i and like i asked it right away on the thing hey it doesn't say he's the interim is he's a full-time manager yes he's the full-time manager going forward i'm like what yeah, which I'm which like, that I I was I didn't even realize that until I was talking to Brad Adam yesterday, and I'm like, "Oh, do you think he wants the job?" And Brad's like, "Well, he's the full time manager." I'm like, "What do you mean? He's not the interim?" No, 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 no. he's a full time guy. I'm like, uh, "Okay, I missed that." You know, I I read the because I was you know in a fit of rage and throwing things and driving for most of the day. It doesn't sound like you, you know, because I'm sitting there <laughs> wait, waiting and like texting. People in the PR office like Jerry's making us look bad. I'm gonna like you know I can't wait to get my you know vengeance on this for making us look terrible. You know I'm gonna break everything in sight, starting with the ice cream machine. But you know that's um, but anyways like yeah. So I just was like there's so bad and they don't they don't come out and say anything. You know they don't they don't put them in person and like so. Ben Ranieri, a kid on the Sea uh, Level podcast that I sometimes go on. He, he <laughs> Jesus, I got to write these all. Which one is that one you're on now? Uh, he Sea Level? Sea Level, I believe. Is that yeah, the one, the guy from Missoula? Yeah, good kid. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, uh, he got to end with driveline, so you better be nice to him, too. A shout out to him. What's his name again? Ben Ranieri. Ben Ra so oh, you know what? And you know what I love about Ben? He has the old school um, Northwest Sports Mariners intro. Yeah, <laughs> where he got that, but that is fantastic. Yeah. What what does he do at Driveline? He works at Driveline. Oh, he's got it in with Driveline, so okay. I think he might work for them as well. Right. So, anyways, Good. he kind of was like, I read it, and I was kind of like, I don't, 
I didn't think about it right then. He goes, hey, it doesn't say interim on this. Is he not the interim? I'm like, <sighs> it doesn't. And then so I asked right away, and then I was just kind of stunned. One, I was like, why would they do this to poor Dan Wilson? Why would he want to be the full-time guy? So, um, and we'd heard that Edgar, you know, was going to be there, uh, be the hitting coach. So I said, you tweet, you know, you said, should we tweet it out? So, yeah, just tweet it out. I mean, you know, fuck it. Does he, you know, is, is what, what, what's the word on him? Is, no, is Edgar's he... not, he's in a realm on that. He doesn't okay. know if he wants to come back. So, um, you know. But yeah, like that whole situation. So we don't have, so it's just like, and then, you know, you're in a Zoom, so you got to raise your hand, then call on you, whatever. It's not like they're not going to not call on me, but it's like, look, you know, it, it's maybe it's wrong or maybe it's right in my world, but me and Daniel and Adam and Tim Booth get precedent over Nico and those guys from you know, the TV guys, because we're there all the time, you know, of course. And, so, and that, yeah. that's not a slight on them. That's no. just the way it should be. Yeah. We get, we get preference in those situations, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, like that's, I, I found that kind of weak, you know, because it, it's not when's... kind of weak, Ryan. It, it's, it's what it's, it's what the person you described earlier. It's chicken shit. It's, it's a coward move by a cowardice organization. You, 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 you hide behind a zoom call so you don't have to really answer questions. It's bullshit. And he yeah. sat there and just and, and you need to be at a press conference on in front of everyone, allow all the cameras to come in, and, and then John and for John Stan to nothing to hide. It, it's just exact I'm just not surprised by these guys. I've been screaming at the wall for years with these guys. They're not serious. It's not yeah. a serious organization. I was I went back and looked. So when they fired Jack Sorenzik, so when they fired McLaren, so, I was, so when they fired all I mean, so when they fired McLaren and then well, they McLaren fired McLaren and McClendon Don and Lock, Hargrove Don, quit. Yeah. So when they fired <laughs> McLaren, um, they fired McLaren. We were on the road. We were going to Atlanta. And um Bill Bavese then did a conference call. Um, with the writers, but they fired him on the road. Bill was the, I don't know how that happened. Um, but then I remember when they fired Jack Renzik, we were on the road in Chicago, I believe. And Mather flew in and then they had me and Shannon. And um, I want to say it was Bob Dutton was with the TNT or I think. And we all went to a hotel and Mather did a press conference and freaking Jack was there and just wore it and talked to us there after being fired. And then, um, you know, and so it's like, yeah, there's a, there's a way you do this stuff. Um, Wakamatsu, when he was fired, remember Chuck Armstrong was there and he did the, uh, he quoted John Paul Jones. I have not yet begun to fight. And of course, Jim is there and he's asking questions and Chuck keeps asking. I'm going, Oh, Chuck. I know where this is going so far. Uh, like Jim's going to write one of his skits, uh, you know, like, cause Jim should be a playwright. And mm -hmm. so he did. And then Chuck was furious that Jim wrote that. And I look at Chuck, I go, how did you not see that coming? You know, uh, but I remember when they fired, um, when Bavese got fired, he did the press conference at T-Mobile and Howard was up there and, and they, Bavese, that was when ba Bavese talked about Bedard. He goes, he'll give you one of his dumbass answers that he always does, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, there is a level, you know, you can't sit there and, and, and ask for accountability from your players and your staff and then not exercise the same level of accountability at times. I mean, you know, I, I get some of the uncomfortable nature of it all. And I think a big portion of this was like, hey, man, you know, Dan is doing this and they don't want to make life miserable for Dan. But at the same time, it was never going to be comfortable if you fired him during the season. And and I'll give Scott credit. Like the next day, uh, so that night after he was fired, you know, I texted him and he just said, hey, you know, just said, hey, you know, when you feel like talking, let me know. And then he texted a uh, group text to me and Daniel and Shannon just said, hey, you guys want to do a group call tomorrow? I'll, I'll want to talk to you say thanks for everything and so he got on there and, and he like you know thanked us for covering him and he said you know just kind of said like you know ryan you and i really butted heads several times and you know and 
he goes, but yeah, you know, he said, like, you help me understand, like, the role of how you guys work and how things go and why you guys ask the questions you ask. He's like, Daniel, I was really hard on you, like, an initiation process. I rode you. And he's like, Shannon, he goes, I pissed you off all the time. He was like, but he goes, I think I got better. You know, and then he goes, and then Daniel, we just asked some questions and he went on the record and started talking about it, you know. And it was, it was pretty good. And he, you know, to the end, he would not bring up Jerry or John. He wouldn't criticize them, you know. And he said, he goes, I hope Dan does really well, you know, all that stuff. And he goes, I want the players to do well. I mean, he was really classy on the way out. His statement was really classy. It didn't mention anybody in the front office, but, uh, you know. I'm Which was, it. I mean, when you don't do that, I mean, it speaks volumes. Yeah, I mean, like he thought, and he, I mean, he knew this. I mean, we had talked about it. We talked about it in years past. He always felt like Jerry would fire him you know, if things got hard. Um, but he thought that, like, you know, if they didn't make the playoffs, that he'd be done. You know, he really did. But he just wanted to try and finish it, mm-hmm. you know, because they they did have that ability. I mean, in 21, they were cooked, like, three different times, and they found ways to, to win. And even in 22, they had that stretch in September where it looked like they're going to play their way out, and then they got hot again. In 23, yeah. they had that. And I think he was hoping for that again. Unfortunately, like we mentioned, I just don't think it was the same kind of players that he had those years, mm-hmm. you know. And and they don't have they don't, certainly don't have the bullpen they had those last few years to make it work. Right. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> do you think ultimately when you do you think this was none of it is a move like this is not just one person making it. It's oh, a no, no. okay. They all get together. But do you think it was pushed more by the front office or pushed push more by ownership? I think who they replaced him was ownership. Was pushed ownership. Yeah, it was pushed by ownership. Yeah. But 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 I mean, to I, remove I, service was Jerry. Think I I we I need to make a move to save my job, or or did ownership say, hey, something needs to change? It's you either fire him or you both go. I think it, it could be a bit of both. I think maybe Jerry broached the subject, and so. Like when they, you know, how he said that they'd been, you know, because I listened to him on with on with Salk and those guys too. Um, like he kind of mentioned they'd been discussing him for three or four days. So when they were in Detroit, and, and it kind of works out, it's usually in Detroit. I think last year or maybe a couple of years ago it was in Arizona. Um, but usually like that last weekend or last week of August, um, first week of September, they have organizational meetings of all their baseball analysts uh, and like all their top guys. So basically the entire baseball ops staff, um, at least the heads of every department, like the pro scouting, everything else, they meet usually somewhere at a hotel and they, they go over their off season plan. So like when they did the, um, so they were in Detroit. So, you know, you got Jerry, Justin, Andy McKay, Larson, Stanton, all the, you know, Dave Cameron, who runs pro scouting, Mm -hmm. you know, Scott Hunter. So they go in there and they all meet and they just discuss the direction of how they're going to proceed for the off season. Um, They did that last year. I don't know where it was last year. A couple of years ago, it was in Arizona, but they do that every year. We're like, that's, that's like the year in August, you know, and, and even services involved in some of that, like the year in August, a few years ago, that's when they decided they wanted to push for the, the rebuild and they, developed a, a plan of thinking of how they were going to try and sell Stanton on the re, Stanton and Larson on the rebuild. Um, so, I mean, I guess my guess is there, that's when they were discussing Scott's future and everything else. And in some way, probably discussing Jerry's future as well and what's going to happen. So, you know, because we, know. we, you have, you, we've talked about this before, but we're, we are under the belief and it doesn't matter with service anymore that he was in the last year of his deal, but that's the same contract situation for Deboto. Yeah. And so like, I've had some clarification. They don't necessarily have an option, but like, I don't know how the, any thing works. Um, but like I was, cause I was looking back on it, like, well, would they take Jerry into next year or give Jerry an extension? But then could they fire him if they gave him extension? Because, you know, today, you know, cause they're so bad going to the end of the season and the mm-hmm. acrimony around the team. So I went back and looked and in 2013, Jack Z was in the, the last year of his, presumably in the last year of his contract. Well, then, unbeknownst to the fan base, uh, Howard, Chuck and Howard decided to give Zarenzik a one-year extension. Mm. Uh, and that was the year where, you know, Jack took the one-year extension and Wedge wouldn't take a one-year because he wanted to have multiple years so players believed in him. 
you know, and then he, he quit and then, you know, trashed the organization on the way out to Baker. And then I had to walk through the flames of it all as Baker's replacement. Um, so, so they gave him the one year that year. And then in 14, you remember they were pretty good, lost out, mm-hmm. and they gave Jack a two a multi year extension. But then they fired him the very next year. So it's like I don't know what they're doing. I don't, you know, even know if they know what they're doing per se. They could have already this. have given him an extension that we just don't even know about. It's possible. Yeah. So you think that, you think he'll be removed? You think he'll be fired? I mean. Logically, you would have done it already, don't you think? So you would have gotten your search committee, which is the biggest waste of money I've ever heard of, and you know, or your search firm or whatever that you hire. Yeah. Like if you're going to do that, because that's what they did with Jack. Remember, they fired him in August of that year, or July of that year, and right. they spent August and September, and they had Depoto in place before the off season and free agency even started. Because he was hired, yeah. Because he was hired late September, was he not? September of 2015. Yeah. yeah remember, because yeah, that was that's the a good thing. point. So the Boy, fact they just... haven't done it yet makes me believe that they are they're going to keep him. Yeah, maybe. I mean, but the thing is, too, is then, like, you think, oh, well, um, okay, yeah, they 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 wouldn't, you know, keep him and then just fire him after the end of the season. But they've done stuff like that, too. I mean, like, you would have thought, oh, like, there's 34 games left in the season. Why don't you just run it out with Scott and see if he can figure it out? Is a new, is a new voice really going to help these guys hit? Right. You know? So it's like, again, like we've said – when you the logical and obvious, these guys don't do, you know, they do. If they do, they do it in a weird way. And and who's doing it though? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, is it John John Stanton? Is he going to do it himself, or is he going to like he going to lean on a search committee? I mean, think about it. I mean, when did Katie Gregg's leave? Uh, I don't know. July. Okay. Have they? They have. They, has there even been a search to replace her? There is. They're in the process of a search, and I heard they have some finalists. I'm like. To me, okay. that to me, like this, that's the other thing. It was like, oh, we're gonna do this <sighs> search when all you had to do is just promote Kevin Martinez, and it's done. Sure, he, he's the best candidate you have, right? So just promote him. Yeah, you know, even that Fred. Put, Rev- hey, here's my idea. Put, let's put Martinez in charge of everything. Yeah, I mean, like Fred, all of it, business and baseball operations, the whole have, thing. <laughs> they have like they have. Perfectly good in-house candidates. Yeah, yeah I agree. But it's, but you know, this is the thing: is like companies these days, they they want to hire not for the needs, but the perception of what mm. you're doing. Katie Griggs mm. was a great hire in terms of like she's smart, and they needed something a different voice and a different look. You know, a non-baseball look at the business side of it. I think she helped, but like at the same time, it wasn't like her tenure was perfect either, and everything. So they got like. I think they've figured out how they want it to run, but it doesn't like sometimes the best candidate is right there. You don't have to do a whole lot. Do we ever get like a, a, a real reason why? Was it something personal family related or was there an issue with the organization? Because it's, she leaves and it's like, oh, it, it felt like it's a maybe something's wrong with the family. But it was like, I don't know, a week or two later and she's hired by the Orioles. Well, I think that she um, well, her husband was living on the East Coast and wasn't. OK going to move out because he'd gotten a promotion or something at work or a new job and so they were just trying to piece it together so i think she'd been looking for an east coast job all right okay. and when the orioles arose and i mean like look she got a i'm sure she got a serious pay bump from the orioles because they got that new owner in yeah he's got all that money he's a billionaire and like this is what you could argue about the situation do you have too many people influencing decisions on all levels with this organization in terms of you have an ownership group like John Stanton is the chairman, but by all accounts he doesn't own the most shares. Larson owns the most ownership mm-hmm. shares. He and has, I think people don't people don't realize that he he that Chris Larson, who no one could pick out of a lineup. Oh, I saw him. He was on my flight the other day. He gave me the death stare. Did he? Yeah. I mean, like, did, did, I was, he, did he? He was look in, like the hobo that he usually <laughs> looks like. He was in first class, and so I'm sitting oh, wow. there. I got upgraded to first class. I opened a seat next to me, and I thought it was going to be like that time when me and DePoto weren't really talking, and all of a sudden we had to sit next to each other on a flight oh, home from my. San Diego. Oh. But no, he is with his wife, so he uh, they sat in the row off to the left of me. But yeah, like, you know, I mean, 
apparently he doesn't want to talk to the Seattle Times because we covered his divorce proceedings with a baseball aspect. Thanks a lot, Jeff. That's another one that helped me out there. <laughs> well, but it's it, but again that that's just a that little story there is just a, another sign of these guys. And I'm I mean, but it's, most maybe most organizations don't know their or fans don't know their owners. I don't know. I mean. I, but these guys, this this fan base, they really just don't know these guys. And I mean, John Stanton's the the most profile guy because he's out there, and you, you know, he's kind of looks like your grandpa. Yeah. So he, but you know, I mean, I've seen one picture of Chris Larson. Yeah, that's it. I mean, he's kind of an ordinary looking dude. Yeah, he's like a little tech I'm, nerd. Yeah, because if you you wouldn't think he's a billionaire by any means. But that's no. the thing is, like, maybe that's an issue. Is like, how many people? Maybe the vision of who they are as an organization or what their goals are um, aren't all the, always the same because there's too many people. Even the minority group has a say in all of this, you know. It's yeah, funny they don't have one, like, dictator voice. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody out there going, I'm going to run it this way. I don't care what you're saying. But uh, that's what you – I think that's what you need, though. Well, I mean, like – so like Steve Cohen with the Mets, he runs it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean the do- the you know, the Dodgers I think are more of a group, but like look at what the guy from the Phillies came out and said about being an owner and what it meant and the emotional mm-hmm. investment and yeah. everything else. So, um yeah, I don't know I don't know what the the answer is, but I do think that like I've said it before on here, I think they want to win. But I don't think that one they're desperate to win, or they have they're willing to t- do what it takes to win, from yeah. a financial investment or just a level of, of discomfort in any way, you know that they're comfortable with where they're at, with the level of success that Jerry's brought them, and you know, and there really is no reason for them to feel any discomfort because. Fans are still showing up. They're going to have more mm-hmm. fans than they did last year. The only yep. thing that's made them uncomfortable throughout all of this is is Root Sports, and it's kind of funny. You think about it; they were <laughs> they're like the uh, they're like the sitcom dad who's trying to use slang that's two years too old or three years too old because they go in and they went in and invested in, a, in a, their own RSN when it was about four or five years too late. You know. Yeah. The investment was needed to be done earlier, but they were comfortable with where it was. The only reason they really went and invested in Root and bought it was because they were worried that Chris Hansen was going to take it over if he got the Kings and was going to move him to Seattle. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I mean, I, I, we've made it perfectly clear how I feel about them. I, I just, I just, nothing will change with this group as long as they run it, and that's the unfortunate part. And that's why I, I just, yeah, I mean, they can change service, they can change the front office. I just don't know what else changes. I mean, I just don't, I don't have any confidence that they would find the right guy. I mean, I hope I'm wrong about it, but, and then you talk about the finances, whether or not they're they're ready, ready to spend any money. I mean, they, they are looming on financial hell coming up for them. Oh, I mean, my, I, I looked at this today. I mean, Logan Gilbert arbitration next three years. So he made four million this year. Well, he's going to get a bump. Nine, okay. Nine, okay. Million. nine million. George Kirby enters the first year of his arbitration next year. If Logan got four point one this year, George will get that at least. OK, Cal Raleigh enters it the first of three years next year. Yeah. He made seven hundred and what? Eighty five thousand this year. Yeah, I can't find a comp on him um, because. Nobody, like most catchers, don't play 145 games going into an RB year. Uh, and I he mean, played 135 last year. What's so he like, going to ask for? What's I mean, I mean, like, that, and he's got Boris, so they'll probably ask for six to six. Yeah. And he okay. can get it. And then you got Miller and Wu. They're entering, what, the, their pre-arbitration the next yeah, two. Yeah, but Bryce, Bryce Miller will be super two, so he'll, he'll have four years of arbitration eligibility, too. Okay. Okay, then you got a Rosarina. So he's uh, arbitration eligible in the next two years. He made 12. 2.8 this year. He'll make 12 next year. 12 no, he's million? Making nine. Oh, is he making nine? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah he's, making, That's he's right. making nine from, or eight and a half from so he, the race. So he goes About to 12. 12. Okay. There Probably go. 12. Garver's on hook for 12 and a half next season. Hanniger's mm-hmm. on hook for 16. Yeah. Julio jumps up to 19 next season. Mm-hmm. Castillo's owed $72 million over the next three years. Yep. JP's owed twenty three million over the next two. Yeah, this so, is a, a, an organization that sold last off season. That's right, that, that sold parts. Don't forget, uh, 
Who did uh, I miss? Well, Polanco's got a twelve and a half million dollar option for next year as well. But it's a club option, right? Yeah, club option. Okay. All right. Well, there's a club option for Polanco. <laughs> Munoz this... doesn't make anything, but you know. Well, they signed him, right? But yeah, they, they took they bought out... him yeah. and him and Demo are like three million next year. I mean, there, there's just, I mean, I, I guess, was there a rumor when I was gone about trading Logan Gilbert? No, so, yeah. Or just somebody just start something on the internet. No, I said that, like, look, if they're going to, they're going to have to make some hard decisions in the future. And I said, like. Oh, this was have, you. This was yeah, a, you, on one of the podcasts said, you're on? I said the most absurd. <laughs> they asked me the most absurd offseason thing. I was oh, like, they could okay. either, they would trade a Rose Arena or they could even, tr- they'll trade a pitcher to get a bat and well, and you know at some point they're going to have to discuss trading Logan Gilbert because he's going to get so expensive and if he has no interest in resigning at some point you have to do you know what the Tampa Bay Rays did sure you know and and trade Blake Snell or trade you know these guys when you realize Tyler Glasnow that you realize they're not going to resign with you and they're they're making more money you know like if Logan makes nine, let's say he bumps up to, let's conservatively say eight and a, eight and a half. He okay. bumps up, doubles his thing because he's, you know, arbitration is weighed on a lot of the um, the volume stats, like starts, innings pitched. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for the last two years, he'll have thirty starts and everything else. Well, so he goes to eight million. If he has another similar season, say he conservatively goes up another four, so he's at twelve. The fourth year would be sixteen million, probably. Yeah, you know, just... and you can't go back down once you reach that threshold. Right. You don't go back down. Yeah. So it's like, if he's not going to resign, are you going to keep him at twelve million when you still got to pay Cal? You got to pay, and like, if you're those guys, and you're looking around, and you're saying, well, they don't ever give us any help, so why would I resign here if I want to win? Mm-hmm. You know, it's money. If all things are equal. Like, if all things are equal, you don't think George Kirby wants to pitch for the Yankees and go home? Of course. You know, you don't think that, like, if all things are equal, that Cal Raleigh would rather play for the Boston Red Sox or the Atlanta Braves? The Red Sox, he grew up wanting to be Jason Baratek. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a better place to hit. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, Logan History, Gilbert. History, organization, you know, Logan, all you know, of it. You know. Logan Gilbert grew up, you know, in the Orlando area, and he loved watching the Braves. Yeah. I mean, you know, there and these there's other teams. You know, maybe Logan Gilbert wants to stay on the you know pitch in a pitcher friendly part. You don't think that the the Giants would offer him money to go? Yeah, I mean, like that's the thing is like one you don't have you haven't shown any interest in signing them, real signing thing. Two, you have a GM that doesn't like to negotiate. You know, he has his offer and that's his offer. And then three, you've given them no reason to want to stay here long term. Because do you want to be Felix? I mean, like, that's the one thing. Do you want to be Seager? You know, those guys all made it in their first years of playing. But what if they never make it again? Mm-hmm. Nothing. I mean, like, somebody asked me, I was like, well, I just, you know, I just want to cheer for a team that's that can contend for the World Series and go find another team, dude. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, there's nothing – like, I talked to a couple guys with the Mariners. Like, we're going to have to run it back with essentially the same roster as next year because they don't think there's going to be any money. And any money that you do get go, has to pay for the inflation increase for Cal, well, well, for right. Logan, and George. That's why they're they're they're, that's, they're 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 getting no free agents this year. It's $17 million. I mean, like, conservatively, you're going to pay $17 million more to Cal, Logan, and – and George, and you are, and then, and then you are saddled with what, what, with, with uh, uh, nineteen, twenty million dollars. Well, no more than that. Um, yeah, twenty, it's twenty, twenty-eight, twenty-nine million dollars. Can I not do math in my no, year? Lo- of Garver and Hanniger. Uh, it's like it's sixteen and twelve, so twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah. The double Mitch, which is kind of <laughs> costly right now. That you're not going to. So, I mean, they're, they're going to have I mean, to eat one of those guys because they need a roster spot, like. I yeah. guess you can carry Garver. You're carrying a twelve and a half million dollar backup catcher that plays twice a week right now. Oh, I mean, it, it is. I mean, if so you, I just like, think. I think. I just think. If Mariner fans, you think it's bad this year? I'm just. I'm just telling. Well, I, it's well, worse next season. It's well, absolutely like, worse next season. That's why, like, I brought up Randy in the sense that, like, okay, 
you know, he's going to be 12 million next year. He doesn't seem to be real happy here on the West Coast. Oh, well, I mean, I just, I mean, the, the effort last night on the on the yeah. on the Tuesday game. I mean, yeah, it was a, it was a bit rough. He doesn't seem to be real happy to be here. Um, yeah. You know, he was overhanging in the Rays clubhouse and he FaceTimes with his teammates in Tampa every day. You know, his wife is mm. back in Tampa. His family's back in Tampa. Uh, like if you trade him. So let's say you 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 look to the, you call up the Orioles and say, OK, look, we want to move Bryce Miller. We'll move Bryce Miller for an arm or we'll move Louis Castillo. Maybe you package Randy in a deal or a three-way trade and send him so you can get money or free up payroll, maybe get a young guy, whether it's, you know, like Jordan Westberg, who's a good quality player, yeah. or Colton Cowser. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know that they trade Cowser. You know, you still got, you've got uh, Heston Kerstad, although his, when he's got a double chin like me and you, I just don't know if I trust that. You know? He could get large quickly. Yeah. So, but I mean, that, there's a way to do that. You know, the Cardinals need pitching again because they brought in all these one-year guys. You can manipulate the system a little bit and and, and package. You know, you're going to have to give up. You're going to have to give up something that hurts. In in my mind, like Randy doesn't hurt because you probably only have him for this year. And like, say you go into next year and you you take Randy, you go in next year. Do you honestly think he's finishing the season with them next year if they're bad? No. They'll ship him out in a second. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. And and the problem is, is like, you know, so like with Polanco, you know, he's, he can't play second. He's banged up. He can barely move. So like he's hit a little bit more, but is Cole Young ready? You're going to give Ryan Bliss 650 at bats. I mean, I'm sure Greg Bell would remove his pants if he gave Ryan Bliss 650 at bats, but what does that look like? You know, like they don't, they don't, they don't have upper level talent to kind of bridge the gap to when those other guys are there. But I'm telling you what you're going to hear if they bring DePoto back is that narrative is going to start shifting to this whole oh, yeah. world. So we're right. It's going to be wait till this next young the next group, wave, the, wave, the wave is coming. This next wave is coming. Young Emerson, who's the, the guy that gets compared to Alvarez? Lazaro? Well, Lazaro Mont- Montez. Montez, yeah. who's like hitting home runs like every at-bat. You're going to start hearing that. Wait till they get here. Well, That's I mean, what we've planned for all along was for this next wave. Sustain us until this next wave comes. Well, that's the thing, too, is like uh, Kevin Mather said that in that infamous Zoom conference. When you're bad, you always talk about your prospects. And when you're good, you don't talk about, you know, like you when you're bad or you shift the focus. I kind of miss it, Kevin Mather, don't you, a little bit? But it's like, like the see us rise and all that stuff, like – I mean, I remember having a conversation with Seeger where he always talks about it. It's like when, you know, when they don't want to talk about all the mistakes they make at the big league level, they just talk about all the, the prospects they have coming up. Yeah. He goes, he goes, I played with those prospects. He's like, you know, like, so he goes, where's Nick Franklin? Where's Steve Barron? Where's Ackley? He's like, I played with yeah. all those guys. Prospects are prospects. So, yeah, um, yeah I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know where they're going to be next year if they can't, you know, infuse some cash into their payroll because they get more expensive. I haven't looked at like, uh, Fangraphs does a really good job. And then this guy named Darren Gosler does a really nice mm-hmm. job with a, a spreadsheet. Um, and I haven't looked that closely because I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to survive this season. You're just I mean, trying to get day, through the next month so you can get back to Montana. But well, I, mean, the I, other I day, get it. The other day I thought, uh, uh, the game. I didn't know the game was at four, so I'm flying into San Francisco. I'm like, oh, there's. I get a text. Go clubhouse is open at this time. I'm like, wait, what? And then I look at, oh, the game's at four. I'm, I'm not well right now. My ADD. So like, uh, like well, we're gonna need your ADD all right next week. Start because we're we're gonna do this li- live next week. Yeah. On Wednesdays, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to send you like ten thousand reminders. Yeah. To um, make sure what time we're on. But like that's that's a weird thing we're in right now with this team is is like they're are they in a transition mode? I mean, hell, you know, like. Well, their win- championship window's done. It's, that's closed. Yeah, because like that, that little window that they thought we had two years ago after taking, you know, going uh, three games with Houston. That's that's over. Yeah, it's that's uh, unbelievable how quickly it just disappeared. 
It's like the White Sox. Remember how like they were going to be good, and then all of a sudden they made the playoffs like one time or whatever, and now they yeah. were reselling. I mean, like I had somebody within the org say Jerry would love to just blow it up again and start over because he likes the he likes the idea of amassing talent more than actually. Yes, I I believe that. I I believe he, the fantasy baseball <sighs> aspect of it. I think uh, he enjoys more. The, the comment from a player, yeah, uh, from a player that I had my story. I know Danny wrote about. Danny cut him up with a knife. Oh, and, Danny O'Neill. I haven't yeah. read that story, the column. Yeah, you know. Danny carved him up, and he did. Like I, I did have one person in the Mariners ask me if I if I ghost wrote it for Danny, and I'm like, no, I'm not <laughs> that good. Of, I'm not that good of a writer. He goes, well, I can sense some influence on there. I go, yeah, he he got some background from me on some of that stuff, but he knew a lot already because he he'd worked for the uh, flagship. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a. I mean, that's another thing too. Is like, how do you go forward? where your top decision maker is kind of like it's not well liked well it's yeah it's toxic almost when he goes out there nothing he says now matters i mean he could go out and say i'm donating two million dollars to a puppy to save all the puppies in the world and i'm gonna have free puppies for everyone and people say like well are you going to probably only going to sell 54 percent of them you know or whatever right you know so he'll he'll never live that down that will be on his tombstone at when he's done and that's and that's the argument you you can make to me like what whether or not he's a nice person you know i don't give a shit you know like i don't think i'm one of his favorite people right now we run hot and cold he you know looked right past me yesterday but like um and i was stunned to see him in Anaheim. but here's the bigger issue I think he's very good at like the fantasy baseball aspect that you talked about of drafting and developing because he hired the right people too. like, you know, because the, the GM, he's probably more involved in the draft than any GM, but the GM really only, you know, helps decide the first couple picks mm-hmm. and then it's all your scouts, but he's hired the right people and, you know, they have a good, you know, they've helped oversee a good philosophy of how they want to do stuff. And then, you know, he, he certainly has, they've found a way to develop pitching and build pitching staffs and all that stuff. But like, you can argue that he's the an- antithesis of Pat Gillick and that he can't build a big league roster. He can't or, land the plane. Or assess assess major league talent even. Right. You know, like his ability to determine how to build a roster and what works and how it's gonna go yeah. is, is not ideal. And that's why you don't move forward with him. And I, to me, that's another thing too, is like, they're starting to shift a bit. like. You know, DePoto and, and Scott was really big on this, was we want to have athletic players that can run and play defense and hit the ball hard. You know, we want them to be athletes. You know, like for all that Evan White hasn't been as an MLB player, that dude was athletic as hell. He was one of the fastest guys, unbelievable defensively. And when he hit the ball and when they weren't fucking with his swing, he mm-hmm. hit the ball as hard as anyone. You know, yeah, he got hurt. But, like, that was the profile. Like, you know, Kyle Lewis. Big, yeah. physical, fast, strong. Are they big, physical, and fast on their team now? They're one of the least athletic teams. Like you know, it's like the whole idea. And then remember, they said well, we're not gonna we're not gonna lock ourselves into a, a designated hitter unless it's a Nelson Cruz type that can really carry it. But they did. They locked it in with a guy that <laughs> legitimately the only other position he can play is catcher, which is like the least flexible position you can have. He didn't even play outfield or first base. So it's like, you know, they. It's it's like they didn't they don't have an identity of who they want to be other than we want to be really it, good at pitching. It changes every year. It's just that's the whole thing of what we started a few years ago about moving the goalposts. It just changes. It just it changes all the time. And it I changes think, he, he he changes his attitude as the wind blows. Well, I think part of it too is is like they're stuck having to be kind of like a high school coach and based on the talent available to you versus the mm. talent you want to go out and get now draft and develop and all that stuff. They go out and draft guys and stuff, or even, but like trades, you're dealing with somebody else's willingness to give up something and free agents. You're dealing with your lack of money and perception. I mean, you think any freaking hitter wants to come to Seattle now, unless you grossly overpay. No, that's, so it's no. like, so it's like you're limited to what you can go. Like I, I've used the analogy, but like, the Dodgers shop at Nordstrom. These guys have to shop at Nordstrom Rack and TJ Maxx to get players. And while that works for me and you, we're not like trying to go out and be something else. You know, like these guys, they just can't get 
the upper level of talent that they need. Yeah. You know, I was listening to somebody who was like, well, because I had said they a lot of these guys are on the decline or they have, you know, coming off of down seasons or whatever, or bounce back candidates. Somebody said, well, they've gotten a lot of younger players that were supposedly on the up and they bring up like Rojas and Canzone. Those guys aren't aren't elite. They were never projected to be something more. They were good players, mm-hmm. but they weren't like you're not you're not bringing in, you know, Soto. You know, and they know he's the the diff. You know, that's a little different. But they're not bringing in guys that are thirty, even 30, 31 yeah. on the way up. They're bringing in Hanager, who's beat up. You know, you, Polanco beat up. There's a reason why the Twins wanted to get rid of him. You know, like it's just they're they're just in a difficult spot right now. Where I don't know how realistically they're going to get that much better. Um, how because one they weren't not willing to invest in it because like investing on payroll isn't just about free agency if you want to trade for players with contracts you need that you know they're not willing to invest more money into it and they don't have good enough talent to win to draw people here and then you have the park factors the travel and everything else so they're in a difficult spot you know and they can't have lulls in their draft and development meaning wow this was a long one. We eclipsed an hour, and I think you, you had to make it up to me. I, I mean, I, owe you. I, I don't know, man. You got, you got wings and stuff like the Great Northern. So we used to go to. the I Bulldog. love the Great Northern. That's a that's a that's a great bar too, man. We go to the Bulldog and uh, and have some burgers and you know, good double. Che- I, give me double cheeseburger, onion rings. Oh yeah, the, good, good, the, good, good, good. At the Bulldog, you know some some wings too go there you know when you've had your fill then i would just go to the northern and start pounding crown royal you know and they'd have get a little crazy in there uh that place i mean we were there like afternoon i was playing ping pong with my kid like i but i could i was looking around going about 11 o'clock tonight and this place it's gonna get real loose yeah it's uh, real real loose and i i kind of want to double back here later you you get some you get some of the younger folk coming down from british columbia and alberta oh oh Oh, my god (laughs) and canadians i mean and and, and i know we're not in canada there but you know they come down there and we're close enough canadians on my trip and i've known this forever but they're they're just the nicest people in the world yeah there's no one nicer than canadians they're all james paxton's up there i I just i want to know what it is about like what's in the water to make them so goddamn nice have you, when you were in Libby oh. and you looked at the Kootenai oh. River, did you ever see water that clear in your life? Oh, I'm telling you, I, I, I told this to you separate, uh, private tax. I, I mean, that's, if I, if I were to move, Libby, Montana's on the list. Just well, beautiful. Well, well, they had that, you know, you're talking about California's are going to invade that place. The only problem is they had that kind of deal with their water where everybody's getting cancer from it so it was like oh, okay a, well maybe check that off the list of libby it was from the like the it was from like the logging deposits and stuff but supposedly they went in and cleaned it all out and everything i mean was, i'm telling you that that little town it was just a, a bartender at 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 the bulldog was like yeah i think libby's gonna be the next one to go but i don't know it's pretty remote to get out there but it, that's a fantastic little town yeah Beautiful. libby and troy montana up there and stuff like that yeah. it's uh that's oh, a great I, drive if anyone ever wants to do that route that is yeah. that's just a beautiful part of that state yeah man. I, uh, it's really fun when there's somebody in a in a mercedes van going 45 up the pass it certainly makes you happy you know every mercedes sprinter van that passed me i just i looked oh, I at thought them. you had one of those you don't have a Merce- you have a volkswagen no van? i have a volkswagen van okay. 45 i'd cut off a pinky to go up the pass at 45. <laughs> damn it i was going 25 in second gear Oh, man. 25 miles an hour up these passes. And every time one of those goddamn Sprinter vans back, because I know what they're thinking. Oh, this is why I don't have one of those. I got one of these stupid Sprinter vans. You know, have you in your Sprinter van. Everyone oh. can have one of those. Well, Not everyone what? can have an 85 Volkswagen Westphalia, baby. You know, if you wouldn't have uh, taken that week off and you would have been here for the service firing and stuff, your media company would have had massive returns so you could buy a Sprinter van. Not, I'm never gonna buy one. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna ever. I'm gonna hold out forever. Never buy I, one of those things. So, did you know that? Uh, Hate him. Uh, Larry Stone and and uh, did he buy one? No. Larry Stone and Adam Jude, Daniel Kramer, Alex Mayer, they're all looking at coming to their first ever Montana football game, Grizzly football game. When when is that? I'd like to make an appearance. It's when they play UC Davis. It's a night game in November. Oh you know, Jesus! Do they know what they're getting into? 
a night game at a night game in Missoula where they start tailgating at seven a.m. No, anyways. They, for some first kick. of all, Larry, what time's game kickoff? Like six, seven, seven p.m. He won't make the game. Jude, yeah. maybe. I don't know about Kramer. I don't know what kind of drinker he is. Stone's not making it. Not a, well, there's not a chance he makes it to the game. Jude is a tackler when he drinks, so he'll be like laying out people in the he, town. He gets game. a little meaty, doesn't he? Yeah, a little aggressive. So. But yeah, like I'm looking forward to them going. So that'll okay, be cool. Jude, I'm gonna. My prediction: When's the game? Oh, you said Se- November. Seven, yeah, November. I don't know. They play UC Davis. So I think highly it's probable that... Jude gets in a fight. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm guessing. Right? Yeah, it's Montana. I kind of want to go to see this. You're gonna take him to all the spots. Yeah, I think so. <sighs> I told him like we go. You know, we'll have to go. I'll take him to the Dinosaur Cafe, get some gumbo laya, and take him to the Ox. Oh, take night. him to the Ox. Come on. Well, you, gotta take go. him. you can't, can't go to the Ox before 2 a.m. I mean, like that's Well, that's not. true. That is yeah. true. Do they still have the gambling in the Ox, or did yeah, they, they get rid of the gambling, no, but they, they don't have live but they don't have the titty bar anymore? No, they don't have that. Mulligans, it was called. God, that was the greatest place. This, this place in Missoula called the Ox. Breakfast, uh, cafe, bar. Uh, poker and gentlemen's club. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, it was. <laughs> it's like your own little fun fair for adults. It's like yes, it's like exactly. It's Fun Island. They had to, uh, they had to uh, stop serving cow brains there though because people were getting sick. So well, it's know. a little too much. All right. Well, that hey Reggie, I hope you appreciated that. It was an hour and six minutes, Reggie. Frederick, you got to you got to cut a bigger check next season. Uh, Ryan Divish podcast uh, brought to you by Shally Bowl. Uh, visit ShallyBowl.com. Book your next reservation. Experience the best in local fun. Uh, I appreciate it. It was a long extended visit, but we had to catch up on a bunch of stuff. Uh, enjoy uh, the uh, rest of the uh, road trip, and uh, we will uh, talk to you next week. Next week we do this live, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So, just, I got to check my podcast schedule for one of my other appearances. Please you know? do. Yeah, let I me. Mean, we'll work around uh, Marine Layer and uh, what's the other one in Missoula? Oh no, sea level, sea yeah. level, locked on the, Mariners, locked on Mariners, yeah. Um, <laughs> AJ Prezinski like won with the foul territory. Yeah, oh, it's you know. Whenever you go just, on with Bump and Stacy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Wyman and know. Bob. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm just, I, I'm just. <laughs> you're a whore. That's what yes. you are. That's what you are. I'm sorry. I'm it's, sorry. That's what you are. Let's just admit what you are. You know, but I I'm, love you I'm, anyway. I'm trying to maximize it on my way out the You're door. You're trying to build you know? your brand. I'm trying to maximize it on the way out the door. Like, just trying to, you know, as I, I go out, it's going to be a flurry, and then you'll never hear from me again. Done. And have her. And then you, you're going to be Letterman when we see you again. Oh, man. I couldn't grow a beard like that, but yeah. Well, just do a fake one. Yeah. All right. We'll, uh, we'll wrap next week. Thank you, sir. Yeah. There he is, the Ryan Davis Show. Again, find it everywhere, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Please leave a comment uh, wherever you can, and uh, we'll have another episode with Ryan Davis Show. Next Wednesday will be a live edition, so check it out at PuckSports.com.